it's not a luxury car, but the 350 Mustang GT 350 came out with its kind of teaser video today. And um, I feel like it's going to be the biggest car at the show. I think it might be the biggest car to come out for a few months. I mean, we're talking about a lot of new technology that we haven't seen on Fords before. Magnetic ride technology, a flat plane crankshaft, which means it's going to sound like a Ferrari. Uh, all of these great things that we've never seen from Ford before. So I'm, I'm super excited. It looks great. It's going to be fast. It's going to finally rival the Z28 Camaro, which is something that Ford hasn't done in a while. Well, and I wonder if it will finally rival the Corvette. I've always asked... Uh I always asked Alan before, Alan Mullally, and I asked Mark Fields now, why don't you put something out that rivals the vet because you have nothing in that slot? And they always kind of say, well, we, we feel like Mustang does uh, pretty well there. This is a car that I could imagine if I were in the market for, the, for a big V8 uh, front engine muscle, I would imagine buying this car. Yeah, I think so. And we'll see where the price is, because I still think it's going to come in a little bit lower than the Corvette, certainly, than the Z06. But yeah, I think that that's a fair purchase decision between like a base C7 and this, because one of the great things about the Corvette is that it's had magnetic ride, it's had the magnetic dampers, which you haven't been able to get on a lot of cars short of like an Audi R8 or... Because they have to license, Italian. anyone else has to license that technology from GM, right? I mean, uh, from Del Actually, it's a Chinese company that bought Delphi now, but it was originally GM technology, yeah. I see. Uh, let's talk about the big luxury uh, sort of... Pullman car that's coming out. Um, at least we hear a rumor that there's going to be a Pullman, a Maybach Pullman type car coming out from Mercedes. What do you hear about that? Yeah, I hear the same thing. And I think it's actually a really great brand strategy for Mercedes because you're starting to see Mercedes slash AMG or dash AMG, Mercedes dash Maybach. And because Mercedes is its own brand competing against bands, brands like Volkswagen Audi Group, which is like five against one because it's Volkswagen, Audi, Lamborghini, you have all of these different brands competing. Mercedes now says, hey, Mercedes is our best brand, but you can get a higher end one. So if you're some wealthy dude in Dubai who wants the best, you can say, oh, well, you've got a Mercedes-Benz or a Mercedes-AMG. I have a Mercedes-Maybach. So the Maybach will go up against, say, Bentley uh, and Rolls, uh, Bentley from Volkswagen, Rolls-Royce from BMW. The AMG can go up against, say, uh, Porsche from Volkswagen or I don't know what else AMG would go up against. I guess the AMG actually... Maserati, actually. Maserati, that's where they're trying to position that brand. So it gives it something that Fiat's apparently going to have going forward. It gives it something where Audi sort of is in that space, in the higher end, when you look at the, the higher end Audi vehicles and also sort of the lower end Bentley products. It gives it something there that it didn't really have before. So uh, I just wanted to talk quickly about the AMG GT because your uh, staff writer, Damon Lavering, uh, got to try it at Laguna Seca. Some journalists are getting it out there this week, and I hope to get a glimpse of it. Um, people are talking about it as like a possible Porsche killer. Uh, here you can see a picture of it in yellow, which is, I guess, AMG's favorite color. Yeah, it's that weird, I think a mola yellow they call it. Yeah, I think that it gives them something that, if you look at the market now, the F-Type is the only vehicle in that sort of Audi TT, sort of nicer uh, space, BMW Z4, the sort of luxury sports car that's actually grown. The F-Type's grown a huge amount. I think Mercedes saw this, saw that 911s actually outsold Cayennes and Panameras last month, and they said, lower end of the market's probably not where you want to be. SLK sales have been terrible this year, but we can actually probably make up a lot of value and get customers that we've sort of lost to the Bavarians by, uh, or the other Bavarians by doing this. So, but this will be uh, in a price class that's above an F-Type and probably more like a Porsche 911 Turbo. Yeah, it's going to be above an F-Type, but not that much. When you start when you start specking out an F-Type, it actually catches up with the 911 almost immediately. Very few people are buying sort of the V6 base F-Types, even though that's actually a great car. So yeah, we're seeing this in the really high-end space. And what I'm curious now, though, is that you look at like the Corvette. We were talking about the Corvette earlier. The Z06 is so competitive and it's so fa fast. And it's not as nice as a Mercedes, but I'm curious if now all these German car companies are going to have to start worrying about the Americans. At well, back. and this is a kind of a, not an argument that I had with Damon, but on your site, you know, the, at least the Corvette, you can still get a stick shift in, whereas the Mercedes, you have to drive it uh, with the paddles. So uh, 